global warming by getting 82% of our electricity from renewable energy by the end of just this decade. That's crazy. It means building about uh, seven times more wind farms by 2070 than we have already, and many more after that. It also means 10,000 kilometres of new transmission wires in just seven years to hook it all up, and as much as 28,000 kilometres in the end. This is what that looks like. Bush like this in Kabam, Queensland, being chewed up for wind farms. Huge wind towers there now dominating the landscape. With this bushland at Chalumbit, uh, not far away, the next to go, environment minister Tengu Booth just about to say we'll be giving the green light to wind farms. But all these wind turbines, what happens when they die? As Nick Cave of the Menzies Research Centre found at Rain's home, the forest in Chernobyl, well, some seem to get tipped into this graveyard of dead turbines, massive blades just lying there. And Nick Cater joins me now. Nick Cater, thanks for your time. Uh, tell me about all these dead turbines or the blades thereof that you've found. What are they doing there? Oh, sorry, the sound seems to have gone. We haven't got, haven't got him? I'm sorry, we'll have to go back to that story later. Um, uh, well, I don't know what we'll do now. But... Well, we're not going to get the wind turbines up, Joe, are we? Nick, Nick, sorry about that. Uh, those are wind turbine blades. Uh, what were they doing there? Yeah. They were dumped there, Andrew, as best I can work out, about eight years ago. They were about 15 years old when they were removed from the Windy Hill uh, wind farm, as they call it, which is one of the small ones. The amazing thing is these things are only 20 metres long. They look huge, but the new ones that are going in are 86, 90 metres long, so you're talking about four or more times bigger, and they don't have any idea what they'll do with them when they're removed. Uh, I thought it was... Um, it was pretty shabby. It was actually in a quarry there in the middle of the forest, and, and some of the locals at Raven's Hoe told me about it, and I said, well, let's go and have a look. I just couldn't believe it. You'd think they'd be doing something a little bit better. Certainly, Andrew, it, it does show one thing, that renewable energy isn't actually that renewable. There's no renewing those blades. They'll just sit there leaching um, various substances into the earth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd, isn't it? I mean, we, we're told they're renewable, but I think these wind farms, what have they got a life of these turbines, about 25 years or something, something like that? What is supposed to happen to them? I mean, we, we've got so many of these turbines going up. What are we going to do when they progressively die? Nobody knows. And the same goes for the solar panels too. I mean, they, they can't be recycled and they're being dumped around the place. There's just no plan for this, Andrew. Now, if you were putting... You would, if you were dared to suggest you were going to put a coal mine in Queensland, you'd have to have a whole program for rehabilitating that land to turn it back as far as you could for the natural landscape. You'd have to put up money. You'd have to in, put money aside in, in the form of a bond to make sure you did it. Wind farms or wind, wind industrial estates, as I prefer to call them, no, nothing. So nearby at Chalumba, which is, which is a remnant forest, it is tropical wet uh, eucalypt forest that is just going to be ripped into for the Chalumbin wind farm. No plans to rehabilitate it at all. And um, it, the, the destruction of, of that native vegetation is just heartbreaking, and it really is. You know, about four, they're talking about an area about twice the size of the Melbourne CBD that they're going to have to rip trees out of to put turbines out. These trees are currently doing a great job, as far as I can see, uh, sequestering carbon back into the ground. That's what trees do. <laughs> but no, they've got to be ripped up. In, 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 they've got to be ripped out and the, the, the home of the greater glider is going to be ruined in order to put up some turbines that are going to last 15 to 20 years at best. And it, it, I, you just have to laugh, don't you? But it's not actually that funny. Uh, it stays me. Right. I had someone on my show about, from Chilumba the other day for protesting. I mean, this issue has turned people that are really pro-global warming policies, really green, and we're talking alternative here, they've turned into raging, not in my backyard, wind farm opponents. It's really, uh, I mean, this is really radicalising a lot of people. Now, the one thing, Nick, you might have more better information. I mean, I've spent a lot of time on this than me on this. Fire risk in having all these wind turbines in farms in the bush off far away from fire units. Now, I know the risk of 
the fire is very small. It seems figures like you know, one in a thousand or one in twelve hundred or something like that. But there have been fires from these generators and from all the wires to them, and we're going to have a lot of them. Yeah. But I just don't see a discussion of that risk. No, and of course, in places like uh, Caban, which has just recently opened near near Ravenshoe, you see these massive wide corridors, these wide roads that have been cut through the bush, and this massive clearance around the turbine area. And that is partly to offset the risk of fire, because you can imagine in a in a wooded forest, you know, that, that it could be a very serious thing. So, and the transmission lines equally as well. And where are the Greens on this? I, I see that the Lock the Gate organisation, which is supposed to be looking after our landscapes, uh, they're not protesting against transmission lines, but they are protesting against gas pipelines. Well, gas pipelines are a far more safe and efficient way of transmitting energy from place to place than transmission lines. Especially as you know, if we if we if we take the science as they call it at face value, Andrew, you know, there's going to be more high winds and uh, more terrible weather that could bring these transmission lines down. But we're going to put what, ten or twenty thousand kilometres of these things up without a care in the world. It, it just goes.